Welcome back, everyone, to the August 2020 1v1 0k tournament. Our main host, Dominic or Shadow here, whichever you prefer. We're in round five, and as is tradition, I'm going to be casting first off the game with the two currently lowest ranking players, which are Rex and Nipka. That will shorten that one. Or maybe I won't. No, I don't think I will. I think I'll just go with Nipka. That, that is how they spelled their name. Four A's. Four A's and everything. Man, we are getting to the end of the tournament. Yep, yeah, going for Glockbot Factory. Or sorry, yep, yeah, going for Glockbot Factory. While Rex goes for more typical. Rovers, though admittedly on this map, Cloakie isn't a bad choice, but Rovers is the more typical one. Like, that is more common. And Nepga going for Conjurers. Two Conjurers very early on. Extremely economic play. On the other hand, a slightly more typical early raiding play. A couple Scorches coming out here from Rex. And Rex also getting at their economy a bit faster. I I guess Nepga wants to go for more of the extremely like a rapid expansion and a little not sure this is relevant i mean so this is the kind of style of play that you would have seen about a year ago year year and a half but since the super fluid update i don't know you haven't really seen as much of this rapid expansion just mexes are more expensive though they are tougher and rapid expansion is less of a thing i Anyway, rapid expansion is less of a thing. My cat is more of a thing. I have a cat now. For those of you who weren't here earlier might be hearing him wanting to come in. Although he's perfectly welcome to come in. I don't know why he's not coming in. But at any rate... There we go. Anyway, Nepga, unfortunately, only really setting up two metal extractors. As I was saying, the old style was to expand explosively across the map and then deal with defense later. But Nepga is... They, they started with that, and they didn't lose any of their conjurers in the process yet. But unfortunately, they did not build up the defense in the process. Nepgya, as a result, kind of behind when it comes to their economy, though mostly behind in terms of energy. Rex going for basically the standard alt-click surround. Not a bad choice. Certainly not a bad choice in this situation. I mean, Rex is absolutely getting ahead when it comes to energy economy. Nipka, on the other hand, does need to get a little bit more in the way of solar collectors, and they are doing that. Sooner or later, they are doing that. I just kind of wish they had actually expanded explosively. They have two conjurers. I either use one to assist the factory, or just get out there. Like, set up, get out there, build up a bunch of stuff, send one to reclaim, send another one to set up a bunch of metal extractors. The fact that Nipka isn't doing that with the conjurers they have is just seems like a waste of conjurers, honestly. Though, nice kill on the Mason. Actually, this is a really nice raid coming in here, forcing Rex to come back. That should give enough yeah, some room to breathe. Though, again, they aren't really using it to actually build up their economy, which unfortunately means they aren't really getting a whole lot out of this. Yeah, Nepgah's play is confusing. And going to build up five Lotuses... Not really the style of play I totally understand here. I, I gotta say, they got the Conjurers, they're getting the expansion, they set up, they got tempo from forcing back all these Scorchers. And they just seeded tempo, letting Rex do whatever they want. Another raid coming in here, though, for Nepgya. <laughs> Sorry, just saw Chet. With cats are secretly vampires, so they can only come in if you invite them. It's like, d are you sure about that? No, that's just my cat. My cat's polite. Most cats don't care. <laughs> Most cats will come in regardless. No, Andre's just Andre's just a gentleman. That's all. Anyhow, Nepgya. At least 
is staying in the game. They aren't too far behind economically, though Rex... Oh yeah, mainly because Rex isn't really building up either. This is not a typical play at lower levels. I mean, these are both... Oh, these are... Yeah, bronze level players. I mean, I commend them for going into the tournament. Absolutely, that's great. It's just, you know, small fits of feedback, like use your conjurers. Though I will say I'm very glad that Nepgya has not lost their conjurers in the process. They've lost these metal extractors twice, and they are rebuilding them. And that's why I always say, when you're attacking, when you're raiding, try to kill the constructors, because if the constructors live, they can easily rebuild. If they die, then it's going to take that much longer for them to get the constructors back into position to actually rebuild the metal extractors. Now, granted, Nep yeah, isn't really expanding, or isn't using the metal extractors, or expanding much, or doing all that stuff. But they have killed a couple of masons. Which has helped slow down Rex's expansion, and as a result, has kept Nep yeah in the game. Fortunately for them, there is a Stardust there, and that will probably take them out of the game, because the Glaives are going right to it. And also, they're, they're point moving. Just general thing. Don't point move. Line move. Line moves allows to spread out and avoid getting killed by AoE attacks like Stardusts. Although, admittedly, I wouldn't recommend assaulting a Stardust head on. But in general, it gets you a bit of a safer position. Allows your glaives to survive longer. Or units in general. Because they don't get splash damaged. At any rate, Nepga. Really could use a few more expansions. I'm going to harp on that for a while. It's just, it is so important, and Rex is running away with the economy. Okay, they're slowly... They're at a relatively graceful trot, walking away with the economy. They're, they're not expanding that quickly. Actually, this north expansion is going to be just... Oh, no, go for it, go for it. This is perfect timing. Exactly what you want here. Glaze getting rid of the Masons, getting rid of the Metal Extractors, getting rid of the Stardust before it's built. That would have been a much harder place to assault in, like, 30 seconds. So, well-timed there. Unfortunately for them, Rexha does have a bunch of Rippers already set up. Good retreat off the Glaze. Reaver's able to come in, deal some damage. I don't think the Glaze needed to retreat that much. Like, supporting the Reavers would be fine, but the Rippers are forced to retreat regardless, and the north side has been cleared up. And now we're seeing the expansion come in here, Nepga, seven minutes into the game, finally building outside of their main base. And they have managed to raid their way into holding on to the game for seven minutes, keeping Rex in a relatively stable position. Same time, though. It's only about 12 seconds before the Stardust comes up. The Glaze coming in here one at a time. Seven seconds. Are the Glaze going to be able to take care of it? Yes, they will. Stardust goes down. Nicely played. Actually, I think that Stardust... Yeah, that Stardust was just completed, too. It got blown up. Well done. Unfortunately, there are indeed more Stardusts, and there aren't any Ronin being built. At all. Just Reaver Glaive. Which really isn't the way to approach Stardust. Like Ronin is your answer. That That is the unit of choice. Get get the Ronin. Ronin is how you beat these things. Not not Reavers. Reavers, Reavers will die. Although admittedly, Rex Commander, Engineer Type Com, the Reavers will be able to get in here. And is it is it trying to build this or is there just... No, it's not trying to build anything. Yeah, Engineer Com cannot jump out of the way. Unfortunately, the Glaze do get killed, but... Oh, wow. Fortunately for Rex, that Ripper is doing amazing work. Does go down, ultimately. Rex Commander did not take advantage of the opportunity to run away, but should still be fine. Does lose the Southern Expansion, however. And Nipgya is finally getting their metal income up as well. Not enough energy to really make it pan out, but yeah, at this point I'm not entirely surprised. It's now there's clearly some multitasking issues going on. That's that's pretty normal at this at this level. Multitasking is a difficult skill to learn. Really, it just comes down to knowing what you want to do, and that just comes down to experience and regular practice. Ooh, trying to get that owl out of the sky, Rex. 
We're actually in a very strong position as a result. If we look at Nepkia... So if we look at Nepkia, we see they don't really know what's going on inside of Rex's base. On the other hand, Rex is pretty much fully aware of everything Nepkia has built. Or Nepkia has built. And with that knowledge, Rex is clearly confident they can just push in here and take the game. I don't know that I totally agree. Nepgya, while they are a bit low on energy, does have a reasonable position to work from as far as their economy and their unit value. Rex is 800 metal ahead when it comes to the actual attrition. But with the right positioning, this Glaive Reaper Force could take out the Fencers and Rippers. I mean, the Fencers, they're kind of... They're kind of in a precarious position regarding the Glaives. The Rippers, it's a bit of a different situation because the Rippers are actually not going to be vulnerable. I mean, think about it. The Rippers, they are riot units. They are here to get rid of the Glaives, but they're also just pretty strong single-shot units. I mean, the Reavers are probably going to die as well. Still, the Reavers trying to come in here. The Glaives trying to come in here, getting torn apart by the Rippers, and that is not the kind of play that Nepgya needed in order to get out of there. Still, Nepgya is at least getting a decent defensive line going. Making it that much more difficult to, for Rex to wreck their face. And now Rex going for Fusion Overdrive. 11 minutes in, 23 metal per second. It's not the best time for that. I mean, the timing is fine. It's just that the at this point in the game, you'd expect there to be more metal extractors having been constructed. Actually, as it stands, Rex might just be able to pull this out. Reavers able to come in here. Ooh, Reavers trying to come in here. Ronin, however, have been built. Finally, Ronin have been built. Do kind of wish these Reavers would line move. Line move. The Rippers are having a field day because Nepgya isn't line moving. Like, that that could have been half as many Reavers dead. Could have been one Reaver, maybe. One or two. Not the entire force of Reavers. Or almost the entire force of Reavers. Hey, Rippers are strong with their... With their splash damage, their AoE. That's kind of the point. It's what they do. And are continuing to do. Although, given the positioning, actually, this might work... Ah, oh. Okay, maybe not quite. It might work out, although you have to flank with the Glaives. You have to come in here and go up here, and... Nepgya does not have the knowledge of that. I mean, the radar from their commander is right here, so they can kind of see... Oops. No, they can't. No, they, they really have no idea what's going on. Especially compared to Rex, who has that owl just flying overhead. Basically just doing whatever the heck it wants, because why not? Ooh. Imp coming in here, not managing to do much of anything. Imp on Iris would be actually really good here. But an Imp alone simply won't be able to do the trick. And unfortunately not able to get in. Nipya still needs to learn some things about unit synergy. Again, an Iris Iris Imp would be great, but on its own, no. And actually, that, this is opening everything up. I mean, if there was a chance before, it's gone now. So Nipya looking down the barrel of death. Also, the answer Google Frogs. You don't think it matters in the Ya part of the name enough? Nepgya! Nepgya! Ah! 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 Well, it's the last time I'm going to have to say that name because this game is over. The Imp's coming in here. Actually, okay. The Imp's doing some damage, but this is still... <laughs> that stunned out the factory. That is going to be it. So... Nepgya! Is done. Not throwing in the towel. Yeah, there it is. There's not even GG. Just quit the game. 
That's... That's... That's it. That's game. Well, good job, Rex. You... There we go. Rex wins! Had the economy advantage, had the army type advantage. Didn't have the army value advantage, but... The use of the rippers was basically... That was it. There was no Ronin to counter it, so that was... Once the rippers came out, the game was basically decided short of Ronin coming in, or better placed imps earlier on. <laughs> Alright, so we are gonna be... I think moving on to round six. Yes, we are. That was the last match of round five. So we've been moving on to round six. Stay tuned for what? Oops. No, 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 no. Sorry about that. Round six. So that might be it. We look at the standings right now going into round six. Thomas, Thomas, Kshatri, and Google Frog are all at the top. Though, they have all played each other. Kshatri looks like they managed to beat Thomas. So now Kshatri and Goofrog are up against each other. Thomas and Anarchid against each other. So, between Kshatri and Google Frog, whoever wins that wins the tournament. Unless Thomas beats Anarchid. In which case, you have to tie break between the winner of Kshatri and Google Frog and the winner of Thomas and Anarchid. If Anarchid beats Thomas, then the loser of Kshatri and Google Frog has to play against... Actually, we could have a four or five way tie if that happens. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, that will be the next round, so stay tuned for that once it starts, which will be in a few minutes.